And now, without any further delay, let's begin today's event. Once again, EMV, a complex process simplified, sponsored by Discover Global Network and hosted by Payment Source. I would like to introduce our moderator for today, and that is Michael Fisk. Mike, the floor is now yours. Thank you very much, Christina, and I would like to welcome the audience once again. We are very grateful that you have chosen to share some of your busy day with us. We know your time is valuable, and we will honor that today with what I am confident will be an enlightening 60 minutes or so of discussion. Once again, our topic today is EMV, a complex process simplified. And uh, my name is Mike Sisk. I've been a New York-based journalist for about 20 years, and uh, I've had stints as uh, editor-at-large U.S. banker and contributing editor of Bank Technology News, and my articles have also appeared in Barron's, Cranes New York Business, Inc., Institutional Investor, Strategy and Business, and Worth. And I am very pleased to introduce our speaker today, Kate Weiler. Uh, Kate's been with Discover over 11 years, holding positions of increasing responsibility throughout Discover Card and Discover Global Network with experience across product strategy, risk management, and operations. She currently leads the new tech delivery team for Discover Global Network. The team partners closely with issuers, acquirers, and merchants globally to ensure the successful enablement of advanced payment technologies across Discover, Diners Club, and Pulse Networks. And we are very, very pleased uh, and honored to have Kate with us here today. And um, just before we jump into more, uh, more content here, I wanted to reiterate one thing that um, Christina mentioned, and that is we do have a Q&A at the end of the hour, and you can put your question into the queue uh, throughout the hour as it occurs to you. We, uh, we encourage you to do that. And um, if, if, if for some reason we don't get to the question uh, that you've asked today, sometimes it's just a uh, sometimes we run out of time, sometimes it's just a question that's better addressed um, you know, offline one-on-one. -on -one. Um, uh, be that as it may, we will definitely follow up with, with everyone that asks the questions today. So please do ask away. We really, really want to hear from you. And um, Okay, so let me just take us uh, quickly through our agenda today. So um, we'll be leading off with uh, discussion evolution of point-of-sale payments, uh, then EMV chip solutions at a glance, uh, one certification delivers worldwide reach. We'll look at the benefits of supporting JCB, the benefits of supporting union pay, uh, discuss this uh, a complex being simplified, and let's work together. So, and then after that, we will have, uh, as I mentioned, we'll have that Q and A session. So, um, that is the uh, the agenda for today. And with that, I think I will officially turn things over to uh, to Kate to get things really rolling here. Kate, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Payment Source, for allowing us to host this webinar today with you. We're certainly pleased with all of the attendees who are able to join and hear more about our EMV complex process simplified. Starting off, I wanted to reiterate the evolution of change in the point of sale payments. This is not new news to everyone. Uh, we started many, many years back with magnetic stripe payments only. The U.S. market shortly adopted the chip card migration supporting EMV solutions driven primarily by policies in 2015. Then we're seeing a rapid change due to customer demand requiring merchants and networks to evolve to support contactless payments for wearables, mobile devices, as well as contactless dual interface cards. So starting off with contact EMV, um, just to share some statistics not here on the page with you, but according to EMV Co., the standard body who provides uh, specifications, a toolbox for participants globally to ensure consistent and global interoperable payment solutions. So at the end of 2017, over 40% of card present transactions were EMV conducted via EMV in the U.S. And also by the end of 2017, over near 800 million chip cards have been issued in the U.S. market, which represents near 60% of all those cards. So I also mentioned EMV Co. I want to reiterate EMV Co.'s value to provide a global standard uh, for interoperability across the payments ecosystem. Discover participates as one-sixth owner in EMVCO, 
And then with the standard and specifications released by EMVCO, Discover has created our solution, DPASS, contact DPASS. EMV transactions are more secure than the traditional MagStripe payments and harder to duplicate given the dynamic data in the cryptogram. Again, it provides global interoperability between merchants around the globe as well as cardholders around the globe. One interesting point I want to call out on the page here today, one-third of cardholders appreciate that merchants have implemented chip card readers for their security. Security has become a top of mind for all cardholders as well as merchants when it comes to conducting payments. So this is very important. And as consumer demand changes, we have seen a shift to contactless EMV. So contactless payments were first in cash-intensive environments where transactions were of low value and the speed through checkout was critical. Convenience stores, quick service restaurants, vending, parking are just a few examples where we see contactless payments uh, increasing and driving adoption throughout the marketplace. Another key driver is also within transit-related areas that have uh, certainly speed through the point the transit gates. As the consumers become more accustomed to the speed uh, and convenience of contactless, they they are expecting and demanding that merchants adopt as well as their card issuers providing those form factor payments, whether that be a dual interface card, wearables, or mobile devices. So quicker, more secure transactions, no matter which form they choose, will be necessary to meet these expectations. Many merchants have already capitalized on this by enabling, and others are also currently exploring how they can adopt contactless payments from all the major international card brands. All major networks currently offer contactless EMV solutions, and some major card brands will require all contactless enabled terminals to support contactless EMV solutions in 2019. Some benefits I'd like to highlight, uh, adopting this technology enables the payments everywhere, can help partners in the payment ecosystems stay ahead of that consumer demand. Supporting multiple form factors, as I had mentioned, whether that be a card, a wearable device, or a mobile device. We also maintain that global interoperability and security, as mentioned, with contact EMV. And this also provides a simpler, quicker checkout experience for the consumer. Some obstacles that, that we have seen for enablement, um, there is reliance on other partners throughout the payments ecosystem to implement contactless EMV. This includes terminal vendors, acquirers, uh, hardware providers, middleware providers, et cetera. Primarily, I want to point out the hardware must first support contactless EMV. From a certification process for the terminal, EMVCO has a process for each payment brand to certify that contactless kernel, creating some frustration in the marketplace. Additionally, we have seen the market first migrate to contact EMV and now coming back to implement contactless. This requires a, a new certification, albeit not a full certification, um, but it does require incremental development. Another challenge that we see with contactless adoption is what I'd like to refer to as the chicken and the egg. Um, issuers aren't necessarily providing dual interface cards, and the merchants are waiting to see that adoption by the issuing banks. Similarly, the issuing banks want to see 
the merchant terminal implementations take place. And I want to call out, again, Discover's solution is contactless DPaaS. Now I want to cover the U.S. Common Debit AID. This is specifically related to a regulatory environment in the U.S. market only. So the EMV technology was developed more than a decade ago to combat counterfeit fraud and was not designed to determine routing in support of unique regulatory requirements such as Durban in the U.S. The first acquirers and merchants in the U.S. to implement used the existing EMV brand specifications and respective global AIDs or application identifiers. These, trans these AIDs route to only one network. The U.S. Common Debit AID applies to both contact and contactless EMV debit payments, regardless of the method. This includes mobile, as well as prepaid or gift cards at the point of sale. So how does this work? The terminal determines which AIDs are mutually supported by both the card and the terminal. If both the card and terminal support the global AID and the U.S. common AID, the following steps take place. The terminal will select the AID based on the priority set by the issuer, or the merchant can alternatively program the terminal to always select the U.S. debit common AID. And one of the statistics here on the page I want to call out, nearly half of consumers in the U.S. prefer to use a debit card for in-store purchases. Some benefits for enabling the U.S. Common Debit AID include the preservation of routing choice. Merchants can make the most effective decision for their business since this AID enables them to route debit transactions to any preferred payment network supported by their terminals and on the, the customer's card. It also provides a consistent consumer experience. It supports PIN transactions as well as no CVM, no cardholder verification method, and signature transactions. This AID also supports cash back and another popular benefit among debit card users, as long as both the issuer and merchant support this. Some obstacles that we have seen with the U.S. Common Debit implementation is the certification process. Although some ecosystem players aren't required by law to support the Common Debit AID, like integrated payment providers, such as BARs or ISBs, the U.S. Debit Common Debit AID allows support for Durban compliance by preserving the debit network routing choice for merchants, and merchants will also appreciate that you have their best interest in mind. Discover solution is the Discover US Common AID is included within the DPAS certification. Moving on, I wanted to highlight one certification with Discover delivers a worldwide reach. We have merchant acceptance in over 190 countries, as well as 105 million cardholders worldwide. We have over 300 billion in spend opportunity that the merchants would like to take advantage of. Some of the cards within our portfolio include the proprietary issuer Discover Card and Discover Bank with our debit product. We also have several third-party issued debit accounts in the U.S., as well as our Diners Club International franchises who primarily operate outside of the U.S. Discover also maintains a number of network alliance partnerships globally. This includes BC Card in Korea, Elo in Brazil, Rupay in India, the Troy Global Card from Turkey, as well as JCB and UnionPay, which we'll be talking about further 
on the next few pages. So some of the benefits of JCB, these statistics are quite shocking. So we have 3.6 million visitors traveling to the U.S. and this was in 2016. We continue to see this grow. They're ready to use their JCB chip cards and now they can through Discover Global Network locations. When you certify for DPASS, this includes support for the JCB uh, test cases which will allow acceptance of these JCB cards. They have over 106 million uh, cards in circulation and shopping when visiting the U.S. is one of the top priorities of these consumers representing close to 20 billion in spend in the U.S. Similarly, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about union pay. So union pay network um, is operated in China. However, these consumers also travel to the U.S. and operate on the global, Discover Global Network and Pulse. This again is a very high statistic. 90 close to 90 percent of these travelers say shopping is a primary activity they do when coming to the U.S. market. This union pay is the number one in value of card payments worldwide. They are also the largest bank card association in the world, representing over 30 billion in spend by visitors to the U.S. in 2016. Similar to JCB, when you certify for Discover, there is support for the union pay AIDs. So to reiterate on our certification options, um, there are many benefits to supporting DPASS and EMV transactions for JCB and Union Pay. We have flexible certification options which allow partners and participants across the U.S. to determine which options work best for them. So we have an Acquire Managed Terminal Certification Program which allows acquires to perform certifications on their own. We also have accredited several service providers who can perform terminal certification for DPASS. We have comprehensive test and certification tools. This includes both test tools, including acquire and issuer simulators, test certification test cards, and most importantly, I want to call out the dedicated team to help. Throughout Discover, we have a number of relationship managers and account executives who are here to support any questions and be with you throughout your EMV journey with Discover. Similarly, we have a lot of information available to you on the web. Um, employee training materials for your checkout staff, as well as in-store signage to provide clear direction to consumers that Discover, as well as Union Pay and JCB are accepted at your location. So, in, in conclusion, I wanted to reiterate we appreciate the partnership with all of the various parties who support us in the EMV certification process. We need to work together to adjust and accommodate the evolving environment and consumer demand from cardholders throughout the U.S. as well as globally. Discover is committed to assisting merchants as well as integrated payment providers and acquires through every turn to ensure an easy and efficient migration to EMV. 
If there's any information you'd like to hear about for EMV acceptance, please reach out to the email address displayed on the screen, dpassinfo at discover.com, or your account executive or relationship manager can also address any questions.